Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I have here a box from CTL, uh, which should contain the 2Go pad, which is the uh, new tablet computer uh, with a focus on uh, education and business customers, but also available to the general public. Really little padded case here, making some noises. Set aside the styrofoam peanuts for now. And here we go. So uh, here's the box. Fairly nice uh, retail package. Uh, tells us we've got an Intel Atom N450 processor, 10-inch uh, LED multi-touch display, support for flash, um, which is not that surprising considering the internals, but I guess it sets it aside from sets it apart from something like say the iPad. Um, 250 gigabyte hard drive, 2 gigs of uh, DDR2 memory, and it's called the TugoPad SL10 tablet PC. So let's go ahead and open it up. There's the tablet. Let's take a quick look and see what else is inside. A little bit of information for the reviewer. Uh, two go pad SL10 driver disc, some information and a wipe cloth. Power cable, power brick. There's something else in there and a VGA adapter by the looks of it. Okay. Set those aside and here's the tablet. Well, here's the tablet in a case. Uh, it's not a bad looking case, it's a Tugo PC, uh, sort of a synthetic leather feel to it. Looks like it's a magnetic latch. And on the back there's the stand, which is nice. Uh, tablet all inside the case right now. Let's see if we can slide it out or which way it slides out. Looks like we've got Velcro and here we go. So that is a nice looking tablet. It seems to have a metal case. Uh, it's definitely cold on the back. It's got a glossy finish on the uh, top, but it's an edge-to-edge -edge display, meaning there is a bezel, but it's a single piece of uh, either glass or thick plastic, I think it's glass, uh, stretching from one edge to the other. There's some buttons on the side here, seem to be capacitive buttons, looks like settings up and down, I don't know if that's volume or brightness, an OK button. Uh, we've got a um, webcam there at the top, logo at the bottom, and I'm not quite sure what that is down there. We've got a vent on the bottom, not too much else. On the side we've got uh, the adapter that you can use to plug in the uh, VGA adapter, two USB ports, mic and headphone, power, and Ethernet, which is actually tucked away behind a little plastic door. On the top, we've got uh, power, microphone, looks like a battery indicator, another vent, and some sort of vent uh, or speaker or something here on the other side. That's about it. So it looks like we've got two USB ports total. Uh, it's one less than you usually get on a netbook, but not bad for a tablet. Um, and I like that this looks like it's probably going to be the vent where most of the air comes out of. Uh, when you compare that with something like the uh, Netbook Navigator Nav9 tablet where it's on the side, you actually wind up holding it while um, and sort of feeling the airflow coming out. Let's go ahead and see if we can power up. Okay. First boot to go PC. While we're waiting for that to load, I'll take a quick look here. This is the Netbook Navigator Nav9 tablet. It has an 8.9 inch display. It's a little bit uh, less physical space on the screen, and you can see it's a little bit less wide, um, but it seems to be 
a little bit thicker, I would say. The uh, Nav 9 takes up a little bit more thickness. And uh, in terms of weight, eh, they're probably about the same, somewhere around two pounds each. Um, as I was mentioning previously, you've got a vent here on the side where you hold it, and this is a plastic display compared with the metal display on the Tigo PC and an entirely plastic case on the Nav 9. Okay, so here we go. We've uh, got it booting up. It's running Windows 7, but as you can see here, there's a touch-friendly uh, interface on top of Windows 7. So you can launch things from the start menu here, and it's a capacitive touchscreen display, which means that you can use your uh, fingertip, uh, but it won't recognize the back of your finger too easily. Um, and we've got access to a couple of uh, applications that you're most likely to need here. Uh, Internet Explorer, Control Panel, Uh, some of those animations uh, sort of take a second to get started, but uh, still not bad looking. And we're waiting for the control panel to load here. I mean, it is an Atom processor. It's not the fastest thing in the market. This is also the first time that I've run it, so uh, it might speed up after a little while. Let's go ahead and close that for now. Um, we've got Quick Launch, Games... Yeah, that could be faster. <laughs> it's a nice animation, but you know the animations. If there's a way to turn them off, that might be handy. Um, if you don't want to wait for them to load like that. Uh, common folders. Uh, we've got my documents, my music, videos, etc. Desktop should show you uh, icons that are on your desktop. Looks like this is EasyBits Quick software. Um, EasyBits is the same company that did the Blue Dolphin software that was on some earlier uh, machines from CTL and others. And I don't actually have it connected to the internet right now, but let's just go ahead and launch Internet Explorer. trying to connect and it's not really working. Um, let's tap the screen here and bring up an on-screen keyboard. You can move that around the screen. You should be able to adjust it, but it's a little tricky to grab that tiny corner there with your thumb. Um, and there should be an accelerometer here, so the screen rotates and applications resize themselves to fit properly. Close all tabs, yes. There we go. Let's go ahead and bring up that keyboard again, see what it looks like now. Um, you know, relatively easy to type with your thumbs here, but the keys get kind of small. Um, I guess they're still bigger than what you would get on something like a smartphone, so. Uh, but because they tried to cram a full keyboard in here with the caps lock key and delete and return and shift, um, it probably could be laid out a little bit better. But if you don't like the keyboard, you can also use handwriting recognition. And I'm trying to make that point, and I'm launching paint by accident. Um, okay. Handwriting recognition. And so that brings up the handwriting recognition app. We do have multi-touch support here. Um, looks like two touches maximum. It doesn't seem to want to recognize three at a time, but we get two. So there you go. Um, I'll have more details soon. This is just sort of a first look. This is clearly the first time that I've even turned the uh, the machine on. Um, but overall, you know, the hardware seems pretty good. Um, could be a little bit faster. Could handle the animations a little bit better. But uh, I'm looking forward to testing it some more. And this is the CTL to go PC to go pad, or uh, the CTL SL10, depending on which part of the box you want to read. And this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing. <laughs>